Welcome to the Symbio Cannabis Podcast, where we help CBD brands launch, scale, and exit. I'm with one of my best friends in the world, Ben Gothard. He's an amazing guy. He's going to teach us omni-channel distribution, content distribution, omni-channel content distribution. Sorry, it's kind of new to me, so I'm excited to talk to you about this today, Ben. What up, Matt? How you doing, my man? It is so great to be on the show. You rock. You know I love you. You're totally one of my best friends in the world, too. And I'm so excited to talk about this because I feel like nobody really understands the power of taking one piece of content and repurposing that across the web. And what I'm talking about here is literally taking a video and now to be fair you can use this for text for audio anything to start with but it's it's the most powerful when you start with video okay. you take one video and you can turn that into over 30 pieces of content the beauty is you don't have to pay anything it's totally free and you can actually generate revenue just by putting it out there on the web. So my promise to everybody by the end of this show is you will know how to take that one video, turn it into 30 pieces of content, and I'm going to tell you how to automate it for yourself to where there are still some people working on it, but it's not you. So you get your time back and this all <laughs> happens without. That's you. incredible, man. Cause as a CBD brand owners, uh, they're, you know, everybody's doing a million different things. This industry is moving so fast. So to be able to do something like that and get your content disseminated out there in multiple places and not have to roll your sleeves up and do all kinds of work is huge. And so excited to hear more about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Where should we begin? Um, so like, let's say, you know, I'm a CBD brand and I have, um, you know, I'm helping uh, educate people with my, my video content. Um, what's, what is the process of really getting it out there? Like your, the, your method that you're talking about. Totally. So I want to dive into this, but first I want to make sure that everybody who's listening, all you beautiful uh, people out there, I want you to know and make sure that you feel comfortable uh, with my background. Yeah, let's go into your background. Yeah. How about that? I just woke up. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just want to share a little bit. I'm not going to pitch anything. I'm not even going to use names of things, but I just want you to know how I came about uh, developing this, this framework, this, this method, um, so that you can, you can rest assured knowing that um, it comes from a lot of uh, trial and error and experience. So, I've had a couple different companies that I've started and it's been in, from marketing to e-commerce to uh, education. And uh, it, it's really been all pointing towards information, right? Disseminating information online, right? That's gotcha. really the, the beauty of it, the, um, the core of it. And, you know, that's taken uh, the form of a couple different companies. Um, I've written and self-published over 10 books. Uh, one of which is a number one Amazon bestseller. Uh, and I also have a podcast where I've published over 300 episodes, uh, one of which actually um, Matt was on. And so that's yeah. how we actually met. Um, Check out Project Egg podcast. It's awesome. Uh, so look that up on YouTube, people. Especially the uh, interview with Matt, because <laughs> Matt, your story is just incredible. And uh Man, from that day, we, we've been such good friends. So I'm, I'm so grateful that, that you uh, came on the show. Anyways, Me too, man. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, in addition to Matt being on the show, uh, you know, I've had billionaires and New York Times bestselling authors and Emmy Award winners and professors and TEDx speakers, just some of the most incredible people on the face of the planet. And like I said, I've, I've published over 300 episodes. And this really, the strategy came from, a need that I had. It was, it was a problem um, doing all of these episodes. And I was getting up to the point where I was doing up to like five a day where wow. I would, where I would like film and pro and they would get out the same day. They would go out the same day. That's incredible, man. I can mm -hmm. barely do one a week. <laughs> Dude, it was insane. I mean, I don't think, I don't think I'll ever go back to doing that many again. Um, but just, 
what you learn from pushing yourself to the limit like that yep. is just incredible. So sure. the problem was I was so good at being able to create the content, but then once you have it, it's like, well, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Right. Yep. So <clears throat> I started to dive into that and I started to figure it out. And from what I learned is the, the, the magic word here is repurposing, right? The key to what we're doing here, everything is about repurposing. In other words, taking that one piece of content that you take a lot of time to create, right? Like we're taking time to create this. We're investing, you know, we, we have all the hardware, the software, the setup. We discussed it. Like we figured out what we were going to do. So we've taken time to make this a very high quality piece of content, right? Yep. That's, that's really like, like repurposing is a key, but starting with quality is the second key, right? So if you have super high quality content and you know how to repurpose, you're, th this is going to work for you. Gotcha. Okay? So what you do is you literally take that video and you start putting it on every single platform that you can find that will send traffic to you. Okay. We're not trying to go out and we're not trying to have to market on a bunch of different platforms. We want the platforms to send traffic to us. So I have a little list for you, right? First, we're going to put it on Facebook. Tons of people. Everybody knows it. They'll, they'll drive traffic to you, especially if you know, you put it on your personal profile, uh, you can put it on your business page, you can put it in groups, uh, make sure to talk to those admins. If you don't own the group uh, and make sure you're friendly with them. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Thanks for that tip because a lot of people, they just post, they think they can post things in a group. You have to approach the group admin or owner before you do any posting like that in other groups. And that's a good tip for sure. Yeah. And now that being said, once you're friends with the admin, then you could probably post as much as you want, but take that initial time to really build that relationship with the admin. And just honestly, you could even be like, Hey, do you want to come on the show or, yep. Hey, do you want to create a piece of content together? And then they know what you're about. They know who you are. You can build that relationship. Anyways, you put it on Facebook, then you put it on YouTube. Okay. And you want to make sure that now caveat, quick, quick uh, disclaimer here. I am not an expert on any one platform. No, I'm not. So I'm not going to say this is how you beat the YouTube algorithm. Mm -mm. What I'm simply sharing with you are the different platforms that you should consider uh, when posting your content. And actually, we need to take a step back. Uh, there are two ways to go about doing your video, right? You can either record it, edit it, produce it, and then publish it, or you could do it live. Yep. And when you do it live, it, you could go out to a bunch of different channels. Now, there's a tool here to do it live, right? This tool is called Restream. It's restream.io. Oh my goodness. That is such a beautiful tool. It is so powerful. Okay. What you do is you hook up your, uh, like, like we're using Zoom right now. You hook up Zoom to Restream and you could do OBS. You could do uh, Ecamm Live. There are, a bunch of, there are a bunch of different softwares that you can use or pieces of software that you can use to actually grab the video and make sure the audio stuff's working and then you broadcast it to restream okay so that once restream has it restream will do what they call multi-streaming which is they take your broadcast and they broadcast it out to a bunch of other channels all at the same time yep and i'm talking about a lot of channels right <laughs> so you could do facebook live youtube live linkedin live periscope twitch uh I literally, when I, you know, when I was doing those five a day, the only reason I was able to, to really get them out that same day was because I live streamed them gotcha. doing 18 platforms at the same time. And you may say, well, I'm not an expert on all 18 channels. Why would I, you know, I want to focus on one and be the best one. Look, that's fine if you want to do that. But what I would suggest is start on all of them because you don't know which one is going to resonate with your audience the best yep. and you don't know which audiences out there are going to be like, Oh my gosh, I love this content. You may think Facebook is going to be your, 
your go-to platform. But then after a while, you might see that, oh, in fact, LinkedIn is the stud of all platforms for me. Like that is where I need to be. That's yeah. what I need to be. And then doing. you could pour your efforts into that channel, and, of course. And yeah. then you could focus more on that channel. Exactly. So put yeah. it out there. I'll put it all out there in the beginning. And because the same effort that it takes to stream to Facebook is the exact <laughs> amount of effort that it takes to stream to any other platform. Yeah. So just start on them all, see which one works for you, and then go in and refine that channel. Right. So if you see your YouTube channel blowing up, go into YouTube and take the time to make it look really nice. Take the time to make it better. Put in all the fancy uh, bells and whistles and whatnot. Um, but but start on start on them all, right? Yeah. So I'm a big fan of live streaming also because, well, not only because you get access to a bunch of extra channels that are live stream only, but the beauty is at that point, because it's live, technically – you don't have to edit or do any sort of production. <laughs> exactly. So that cuts out a serious amount of time, uh, both time that you have to get somebody else to edit for you or you have to edit yourself, which is not what you want to be doing, or, or and time that your people, your audience has to wait to see that content. Yeah. Right? So just live stream it. It's out there. It's fine if the production quality is not, you know, NBA level quality. Like you can get there over time. You can get better over time. That's fine. Is there a way to live stream it and have like a video intro? Yeah. Like, okay. So that's what I need to do instead of record. Cause I add my, you know, I have my assistant add the video intro and all the other stuff, you know, and so we could do that. Okay. I need do to talk live. to you later then. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Live. Well, I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. Right. Okay. You use a software like Zoom or Ecamm or OBS, like I'm saying, and then you preload that intro. So you click a button yep. to go live. Then you click a button to do your intro. And then when the intro is over, it just, you just switch the, uh, the feed to the show. Gotcha. Um, it's easy. It's really easy. It takes like, look, it takes like 30 seconds to tinker with it to the point where you know how to do it. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's super easy. And nice. let me just, uh, even more uh, disclaimer here. If you're not willing to put in some time to make this work, then don't even start it. Like, <laughs> you're not going to be consistent enough anyways. You might as well just, you know, not even waste your time. That's a good word to consistency. Like, if you're going to start doing video productions and, and, you know, doing a podcast or whatever it may be, you have to be consistent with it and, and just persistent as well and just keep doing it and it'll build up like I always look at Joe Rogan uh, he started 10 years ago and nobody was watching his podcast for like the first year or whatever and he just kept doing it and then it built up and now he's really powerful broadcaster and it's it's incredible and the quality was terrible in the beginning the uh, the production quality and you know they got better and better and and so that's what you do if you stay persistent and consistent you'll you'll get better over time and so don't worry about like the production value and all that in the beginning, just get the information out there. As long as you have really good information that people want to know about, that's the most important thing, I think. Exactly. So let's reel it back in and let's, let's then uh, keep on going. So we've talked about live versus pre-recorded. My suggestion is to do live. If you want to do pre-recorded, that's totally fine too, but choose one and then rock it. Okay. Yep. Once you have your content, what you want to do is you then want to literally take that video and like I said, you want to make sure that you're putting it on to, and I have notes here, so I'm going to be looking down. Um, you want to make sure that you're putting it on Facebook and on YouTube. Okay. And if you're really good at what you're doing, then on YouTube and on Facebook, uh, but mostly this goes for YouTube, you can literally put in your description some sort of call to action getting people to then do something that uh, is beneficial for them or, you know, whatever you may want to sell them something, get them to sign up on your list, encourage them to do this, that, or the other thing, or, you know, whatever you could use your description how you want to, but there's a monetization opportunity there for you. 
Yeah, even if it's smart. not direct, it's indirect. Right? Yeah, you should always have some sort of call to action. I think in every video that you post, whether it's try a free sample here or or fifty percent off or thirty percent off, whatever it might be, you know, you yeah, that's what the, you want to provide that value in the video, but also try to get them get their email, get them to your site, like you're saying. So yeah, definitely exactly. add a call to action. Exactly. Now, one thing I do with my show is I definitely vet that call to action if one of my uh, guests wants to offer a call to action. The way I see it is if their whole reason for coming on the show is to pitch, honestly, I don't care who it is. Uh, oh, by the way, is profanity okay? Oh, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So I don't give a shit who it is. Yeah. If they're going to come on to my show and pitch and turn it into a pitch fest, <laughs> yeah. honestly, fuck off. Like, I don't want you on the show if you're going to yeah. do that. Yeah. It just drives me nuts because it changes the whole dynamic of the show. Yeah, and there doesn't there, even need to be a pitch in the show at all. It's just mm -mm. that the, the description can just have the, the website. And if they like your information, they're going to go on your website. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is what they're not thinking about, right? This is what they're not thinking about. They don't realize that when they make a pitch today, they set – a time limit on the usefulness of that content. They give it a shelf life. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. If they stick to pure value, that content can last forever. That's it a great is point. evergreen, okay? But yeah. the second they put up an offer, it has a shelf life. Because let's say they say, go to mywebsite.com slash coffee cup. Whatever, whatever, yeah. right? The second that they lose access to that URL, <laughs> when they mess up that specific uh, path, like slash coffee cup, they change it to something else because they forget, yeah. or they they decide to totally switch domains, or they, you know, 200 years, they're dead, and somebody else is doing shit with their domain. Like, they have no control over that, and you as the host, as the creator of the content, you have no control over that. So I always tell them, do not pitch. If you pitch, I don't care who you are. I'm going to delete it. Yeah. That's just my <laughs> policy, right? Do your own thing, but I would highly suggest to eliminate all pitching, all offers from the actual content and use the description for that. Use the description. Yeah, that's Provide smart. so much evergreen value and just love on your audience so hard during the actual content that they're like, oh my gosh this person is literally telling me everything that I need to know to accomplish this thing. I have to look more into them. I, I love have to it. look more into them. Yeah. So anyways, you're putting it on Facebook. You're putting it on YouTube. Here's the thing that almost nobody knows. Okay. Amazon wants your content. Okay. And Amazon wants to sell your content and Amazon wants to pay you to be able to sell your content for you. Really? Okay. So what you do is you type in, it's either Amazon Direct Video or Amazon Prime Direct. Okay. And you sign up as a, as a seller, whatever. And you put your videos onto Amazon. You know how they have Prime and they have Prime Video? Yeah. And you know how if you go into Prime Video, sometimes you can watch stuff for free and other times you have to pay for it? Yeah. Okay. We then become the part of that catalog of videos that could be paid for in prime oh, i had no idea you could do that yeah it's huge okay so that means that you now get access to amazon's 300 million or whatever customers and they want to make money so they want to sell your stuff yeah. and nobody's doing it so if you do the most basic uh like the most basic optimization for your for the actual name of the video like your title and your uh, description you're gonna rank highly for something it's <laughs> gonna be easy to get you know to get really high up there on the on the on the amazon search engines right yeah. so whereas youtube you might go in there and there might be you know forty thousand videos on that same topic amazon might have two yeah it's just so unbelievably underutilized i just i'm baffled by it yeah and there's honestly. only 300 million people <laughs> yeah seriously that's it's all. crazy <laughs> that's yeah all. and they and they don't charge you anything so you put it up there wow. you start getting paid now here's where a lot of people are going to say 
wait a second, Ben, hold the fuck up. You're putting the video for free on YouTube and you're charging people for the video on Amazon. What are you, some kind of swindler, <laughs> some kind of scam artist? No, guys and gals, check this out. It is not your responsibility to tell people how they should consume your content if you're going to blast it out there, okay? It is their choice whether to get it, whether or not to get it on Amazon or whether or not to get it on YouTube. They may want a copy that they own for themselves. They might want to rent a copy. They might want to just consume it through Prime because they hate YouTube. For whatever reason, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's their choice, okay? And, and could you make it free if you wanted to, if you didn't want to charge people? Sure. Yeah, okay. you can make it just, free. Just to get the content they'll, out there. They'll show ads, and you'll still get paid for, for ad views, just gotcha. like YouTube, if gotcha. you monetize the YouTube videos. Um, but look, don't feel bad about that, and don't feel weird about that, because you took the time to put it on that platform and to put in the quality of that. And if they want to consume through through Amazon and Amazon's driving those customers to you, like that's fine. That's their decision to do that. You do not, don't feel bad about that. Do yeah. That's really cool that. though. Cause you could do like a mini TV show even of your own and put it on Amazon. Then you have a TV show. Like, uh, like for instance, when I had my brand hemp logica, we would give um, <clears throat> uh, CBD oil to children with epilepsy and we would, have, we would have, try to tell that story as much as possible, but mm -hmm. I would send, you know, if you were doing that as a company now, I would send a video crew or like just a video person to document the story and then do a little editing of it and then, and have uh, episodes basically of the people that you're helping. And so you could use different ideas like that and create like a, a, a TV show basically, you know? Exactly. Um, there's nothing that can stop you. And then you have a potential of 300 million listeners just on Amazon alone. <laughs> right, right. And here's the beauty. I'm so glad you mentioned the TV show. They give you a couple different categories. You can do standalones or you can do episodes. So you could literally do a whole TV show and put it up there. And then they give you the option to have like a subscription so people can pay monthly to get access to all your stuff. It's really a beautiful platform. It's really, really cool. So That's go awesome. check that out. So you could do like a show sponsored by so-and-so brand, whatever, you know? And, and so, yeah, there's different ideas like that. I love it. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay, so we're on Amazon. Uh, it's either Video Direct or Prime Direct. Just Google it and, you know, put in at least 15 seconds of effort and you'll find it. <laughs> next, <laughs> next is we're going to take that same video and we're going to turn it into a DVD, Okay. Yes, like the old time DVDs, right? Uh, <laughs> they, they still exist, guys, <laughs> gals, I promise. So Amazon, again, will do this for you for free. All you need to do is look up Amazon, and that's like media on demand, something like that. But you basically upload your content to Amazon media on demand, and they will now sell your video again as a DVD. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have my own DVDs. Hell yeah, you do. <laughs> Amazon does it for you. <laughs> and you don't have to hold any inventory. You don't have to worry about customer service. You don't have to worry about shipping. You don't have to worry about any of that. Amazon does it for you. And, and this could be just for like a basic podcast even if you wanted to? Anything. Wow. Anything. That's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So like it's, old people maybe that still use DVDs <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might want to order it. Seriously. Or think about this. Let's say you turn, you take, you, you know, your first 30 or 50 episodes and you say, this is season one. Oh yeah, good idea. You create a whole bundle DVD just yeah, for season one. That's smart. I like that. Yeah. yeah and you can, you, like you could do, add some t-shirts into it and turn it into a whole program and have some bonus stuff and really turn it into a product. Like make a product. Great out. idea, man. <laughs> yeah. So like it's there. It's there. It's all there for you. And Amazon does a great job. Um, next, we're going to go and we're going to put it on Vimeo. I'm a little iffy about Vimeo because they try to upsell you all the time, but they do have a free plan that's kind of similar to YouTube. And same thing, you want to put stuff in the description there 
uh, get drive traffic from Vimeo to you using the description. Uh, then you want to go into something called Newsflare. Okay. And Newsflare is, it's not going to be the right platform for everybody. But what Newsflare is, is a platform where a big media company like, like an ABC or a TNT or a, or a Fox or whatever, they go and they buy video clips to use in their production. Oh, yeah. So, so let's say you have a really awesome piece of hard hitting content that they want to include in, you know, the news or they want to include in a story that they're doing or, you know, whatever. They can go and buy the rights to your content through Newsflare. And it's really, really cool. Do you really, get really to cool. choose how much you're selling the content for? Yeah. Yeah. You get, you get to choose. Yeah. Um, let me, let me, uh, let me actually take a step back. I am least familiar with Newsflare. So again, I want to bring awareness and I want to get everybody thinking about, oh my gosh, there's this whole world of, I can put my content on platforms that will drive traffic and revenue to me just because they want my content. Yeah. And that's really the gist of what I'm trying to say. The specifics of the actual platforms, honestly, Googling it and reading it on the website would be way more helpful than I would be. <laughs> Got so, so we want to put our news flare. Then what we want to do is we want to take that same video, okay? And this is for, you probably need over an hour uh, worth of content for a single piece to do this one properly. You could do it shorter, I'm sure. But what I would do is I would take that video and I would chop it up into different segments. And each segment needs to have like a title. And I would put that, all those segments organized nicely into Udemy as a course. Oh, cool. And sell it as a little mini course and price it appropriately, do what you need to do, uh, but offer it as a course on Udemy because Udemy wants to sell that for you again. And they have tons and tons of traffic. Um, and it's just like, why not? Why would you yeah, not do that? Exactly. Right? Especially like if you're a CBD brand and you're a health and wellness CBD brand, let's say for instance, you could do like a, a program on nutrition or, or exercise and sponsored by so-and-so CBD company. And it's just a great way to provide value to potential customers. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this is when it starts to get uh, really fun. Okay, nice. so there are a couple other uh, platforms that they're kind of like marketplaces that are up and coming. So you put it on here because you want to build a name for yourself everywhere. And then over time, you're going to see the fruits of this labor. Okay, gotcha. so there are a couple different places to do this. Gumroad. Envato. Zibit. Bonanza, Etsy, okay? All of those platforms, you can put your content there. You can put video content on Etsy? Yes. <laughs> really? Exactly. I didn't even know that. Exactly. I thought people just sold like jewelry and trinkets and art on there. <laughs> Most people do. Yeah. That's why you want to get in on it early. That's yeah. why I'm saying do it, put your stuff there. And look, all of these platforms that I'm talking about, you may not go viral in your first week. In fact, you probably won't. <laughs> but think about five or 10 years down the road when this stuff is still making you money and it's still driving traffic to your brand, okay? Yeah. This is a long-term play. And it sounds like a lot of work and uploading all the uh, videos to all these different sites. How do you get that done uh, efficiently? So... I'll tell you that I want to run through the platforms. Oh, cool. You're we'll still talk about the automation. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. We're, we're almost a fourth of the way finished with this. Awesome. Let's keep it. So, right. so now we have it on all of these different platforms for video. Okay. Yeah. Here's what nobody thinks about. Very few people think about you take the audio from that video and now you have a podcast. Yep. So you publish it as a podcast and that you have to put it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, so on and so forth. Yeah. 
and it's very easy once you like you set up your your media host and you just upload it upload the audio there and then they should auto distribute it using rss feeds once you've set it up like a lot of these things are set them up once go forth and prosper okay gotcha. so you put it as a podcast then you take that audio and you go back to amazon and this one back to media on demand and you sell that same content as a cd <laughs> that's awesome right <laughs> so it's a cd this time so this time you, you go through the same process media on demand so on and so forth but instead of them popping in the dvd to their tv or their computer whatever however you consume dvds in this day and age then you can do a cd that they can put in their car or put in their whatever device and so again it's it's leveraging amazon's platform because some people prefer audio some people prefer video some people want to stream it. Some people want to have a hard copy of it. Let them choose how they want to consume it, okay? Yeah. It's their choice, not ours. Yeah. I mean, you can say you can only consume it this way, but I wouldn't suggest that. I'd suggest letting the customer pick because they know what they want. Um, then you do a really cool thing, which is you take that audio and you sell it again on Amazon as an audio book and you yeah. use acx as the platform for that and so that puts it on audible which is a huge platform yeah. such a such a strong company they're so smart they're so smart yeah they are audible it puts it on amazon and i think it puts it on a couple uh, puts it a couple other places but anyways it's brilliant so you put it on acx and then it's there it's just selling for you all the time all the time um, then all those platforms we mentioned before, those like up and coming marketplaces, yeah, like your, uh, your gum roads, your Envatos, your Zibits, your Bonanzas, your Etsy, so on and so forth. I even played around with eBay for a little while, but it was such a pain in the ass. I was <laughs> like, I don't feel like dealing with this, but you could do it on eBay too. Right. Okay. So you, you go back to all those platforms where your video is. And then you just upload it again as an audio book and you have two versions of the same thing, one video, one audio and price it appropriately. So then people have a choice. Okay. Gotcha. And then once you've done all your audio, now we're about halfway through this whole process here. Okay. And this is where things get really spicy and really <laughs> fun. Okay. You take that audio and you get it transcribed. Now yep. you can use, a VA, you can use Temi, which is like AI transcription, which is like 90 to 95% accurate. Uh, and it's like 10 cents per minute. So I'm not going to do the math and make myself look dumb, but whatever <laughs> 10 cents per minute times 60 minutes is, I think that's like $6. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but anyways, do what you need to do to get it transcribed. And then you publish a freaking book. You publish a book and you publish it as a paperback and an ebook. Okay. Wow. So you publish it on Kindle, going back to Amazon. Amazon's going to be one of your biggest money makers, right? You publish it on Amazon as a paperback book, as an ebook. Then you go to Lulu, Scribed, Kobo, Smashwords, Book Baby, publish them all, right? There are tons of lists of self publishing platforms that you can go to. And then there's some directories where you publish to them and then they publish for you. Yeah. So you put as a paperback ebook on all those. Now, I would say maybe one percent of like the really top level, high level media companies or entities are gonna have figured that stuff out to some degree, right? They're not gonna do it consistently. They're not gonna be persistent about it. And they certainly don't have it automated. But some of them may figure this out. Here's what zero point only 0.00001% of people are going to do with this, okay? You take that book, that text, okay? And you go to a website called Babel Cube. And you make an account and you put your book up there. And then people from around the world will come to you and they will say, hey, can I please translate your book? into different languages for you for free 
Oh, that's awesome. For free, dude. <laughs> they literally will come and translate your book. So what you do is you get it translated in a, as many languages as you can. Probably should stick that into Google Translate to make sure they're not, you know, <laughs> so far out of the, you know, so far away from what you're meaning to say. And, you know, come up with your own quality control thing there. But then go back to all those other platforms <laughs> and republish it again in the other in language. Different language. Wow. All the different languages. And imagine, like, if you're, you know, my audience is mostly CBD companies um, and service providers as well, but mostly CBD brands. So imagine if you're a CBD brand out there watching this, think about before you started creating content with what Ben is talking about, if you could take what Ben is talking about and create something that would be able to be disseminated the way, you know, that would interest people. So think about that, that the possibilities are endless. Yeah. And <laughs> y'all, wait, there's my, there's my Southern coming out from New Orleans. <laughs> um, but y'all just think about if you're think about the, the scenario, right? If you're a customer, and you are looking for some sort of CBD solution, but you may be a little timid. You may not know what you're doing. You just want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself because you're putting things into your body, right? You want to make sure that you're healthy. Who are you going to trust more? The company that's educating you and that's proven that they are willing to invest in creating content and putting out information that's useful to you and yep. it's educating you and directing you and guiding you to the right, you know, to the right thing for you or the company that just has like, just is like, buy my shit because <laughs> I want money. Like, yeah. And it's, it's so true. And, and, <clears throat> and you could team up, like if you're not comfortable doing the content, you could team up with a doctor or a naturopathic or, you know, a DO or a chiropractor or a natural health expert. And so there's so many different ways of doing it and making this happen. And, and you could create a whole series uh, sponsored by your brand. And I love it, man. It, it's a lot of work, obviously, but if, what are we here for? We're here to help people. And so it's, it should be an, an enjoyment to create uh, this type of content. Yeah. And it, once, it's a lot of work on the front end, but I'm going to tell you how to make it to where all you have to do is actually do the content. That's and then awesome. everything else happens for you. Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. So we have video audio text. Then we're three fourths of the way there with the, with the omni channel content distribution method. Then what you do is you want to grab bits and pieces. So you might take your 60 minute video, grab a two minute clip or take, take a quote or take a screenshot, whatever. Yeah. Get, get some micro content and that's what you publish out on social. Oh man. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. You could, you know, Twitter and, and Facebook and put quotes up and yeah, exactly. Yeah. And use that to drive traffic back to the main content. And then you use something cool, like a, like a missing letter or like a, uh, what's the word, um, whatever, but it, it, there, there are company, there are pieces of software out there that are cheap where you can publish something once and it'll stick it back in the queue for you at a certain time. So like, let's say you take the time to put out this micro content because all this content's evergreen, right? You, you take the time to make this micro content and you publish it today. Well, you may want to publish it in six months or three yeah. months or two weeks, whatever. So you build this enormous catalog of constantly looping, like you're adding to it. So it stays fresh, but it's like it's constantly looping and driving more traffic. So over time, you're just reaching more and more and more and more and more people, right? And that is the full cycle. You start with the video, you put, you put it on all the platforms, you then take the audio and you put that on all the platforms, you transcribe it into text, you put that on all the platforms, you get it translated, you put you go back and put that on all the platforms and then you take your micro content and you use that to market all of these other things. So you're literally taking one piece of content and you're putting it on 30 to 40 to if and look, this is not an exhaustive list of platforms. There are, I'm 100% sure there are more platforms to put it on to 
get more traffic and drive more revenue and get more exposure. Okay. So this is how you take one video and put it on almost an unlimited number of platforms. And that's the flow that I would suggest doing it in. Okay. That's the flow. And then of course, use your micro content to market your bigger pieces of content. So at this point you might be saying, Ben, you totally just blew my mind and that was amazing. And this sounds great at all, but I don't have time to do that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this southern this southern dude from new orleans is coming here talking about putting it on four hundred thousand platforms and taking the time to transcribe and do all this micro content what the <laughs> hell is he talking about okay you may not sound exactly like that <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you may be saying and what i'm here to tell you is it is very very simple not easy it's very simple to automate this Okay. Yes. All you have to do is build out a standard operating procedure where you go platform by platform and you document how to go about uploading to this platform or to these platforms and go step by step and show exactly how to do it. And then you get a VA to do that for you. That's yep. it. That's it. The time investment comes on the front end when you're building out your standard operating procedure. And let me tell you, it does take some time to do that. Okay. Yeah, because, because what happens is you build it. Okay. And it, you, you think it's flawless and then you hand it to somebody who either like English is not their native language or like some issue pops up. And th- your VAs will show you where your system sucks. So yep. then you can go in and make it better. The beauty is that it becomes a self-correcting system, right? What we're talking about here is building a system. You're building your own system, okay? So you take your process, you hand it to your VA, and you let your VA do it. They're going to mess up. It's inevitable. Just deal with it. <laughs> and so they're going to mess up. You're going to see where they messed up. You're going to go fix your system. And then it goes back to them. They do it. You see where it sucks, you fix it, and it's a cycle. And so you now have a system for omni-channel content distribution that works without you because eventually, once once you have your VAs working and doing it, and then they're regularly showing you how to make it better, and then they're just in the flow of doing it, then you hire a little bit more elite uh, project manager to oversee your virtual assistants. Yeah, that makes sense. Bam. Now you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. And look, let's say you don't even want to be on camera. Just hire a face to your brand or a media personality or whoever to actually create the content and have them work with your project manager and your VAs to do it all for you. Okay. And there's actually a lot of people that would love to do that. And even for a piece of equity, possibly where you wouldn't even have to pay them. They're just, you know, get a piece of your company. And they, they wouldn't even ask for a lot either, a lot of people, because they just like to share information and get their name out there. What I would, what I would highly recommend is I'm like, when I hear giveaway equity, I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. What I would suggest is incentivize your, your hosts, like your show host or your media personality, incentivize them with a rev share. On, yeah, or rev on, share. Yeah, there on you go. Products, on products that they sell. So you have all these platforms. You're going to have tons of links and plenty of ways to track yep. where people are coming from. Set up an affiliate program for your business, which you should have anyways. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Set up an affiliate program and just make your media person an affiliate and let them put all their links into the the whole program yeah that's a better idea than giving up equity (laughs) well i'm i'm not here to tell anybody what they should or should not do i'm simply making suggestions unless it's like dr oz or somebody like that and you might want to give up a little equity to somebody that's you know (laughs) (laughs) that's a little famous or something but yeah otherwise it's yeah better to do affiliate arrangement and so yeah sorry to go off on a tangent there oh all good all good so that's the system that's the whole, that's the strategy, right? You now, you know, more importantly than the specific platforms, you understand the concept of, I am not just stuck on YouTube or Facebook. Now, you know, there are marketplaces that would love to send traffic to you. Yes, you, 
you right there. They would love to send traffic to you because they desperately need more products to sell. They need more products. That's how their business model works. So when you come to them and say, I have a very high quality product, they're like, fuck yeah, you do. Come on the platform, okay? They love it, okay? And you get a free distribution channel that is going to make you money and drive traffic to you. It's a win for everybody. It's a win for everybody. That's awesome, man. And yeah, and if people are thinking, you know, I don't have a lot of money for a VA and all this, there's websites like one of my favorites is freeup.com. It's F-R-E-E-E-U-P. And they have really good virtual assistants from the Philippines and other places around the world that you can pay like five, six dollars an hour. And they're excellent college educated speak perfect english work hard and so you just have to communicate like ben was saying your sops have to be step by step so that you know they just have clear directions if you can give them clear directions and and then eventually get somebody to oversee that person then you're going to do really well with this and so that's uh you know a piece uh, a website i would suggest checking out there's also one uh they recently did a uh um a rebrand they were gen m.co i think they might be acadium or arcadium or something like that but you pay like i don't know 50 60 70 dollars a month and you get for 10 hours a week a free intern and it's a brilliant business model because the intern gets experience and you're kind of mentoring them yeah and they work for 10 hours a week that's 40 hours for like Seventy dollars. <laughs> Do the math, friends. <laughs> that is a steal for you, the business. It's brilliant. Okay, yeah, so look check that up. out. That and those are and you get to choose who it is. So you could say it's like a swipe thing. You're like yes, no, no, yes. Anyways, we wow. all know what it. That what sounds a swipe great, thing man. Is. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds awesome. like a great idea for a company. And and, and, um, and here's the other thing, right? Here's the other thing. Let's say you don't even want to pay that much, but you still want to get started on this and you want to mostly do it yourself. Do it yourself. Pick the platforms that make the most sense for you. Like if you want to just start on one, just start with Amazon Video Direct or Prime Direct, whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You don't have to do everything Ben was suggesting here. You don't have to put them on CDs and you know, and do all these things if you don't feel it's the right fit for you or it's going to take too much time. But there are so many good ideas in this. And and I think the best idea, like Ben said, is just try all these platforms initially and then see where you're getting the most traffic. That's what I did when I first started the CBD business success. I did it on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, and I probably should have done it on more, but I did those too. And I saw that Facebook was much more active. And so I put all my eggs in that basket. And Um, But I am going to do more on LinkedIn as well, because you don't want to ignore places either. It's just about having enough time to to do everything and and having the right team of people to help you. Eventually, that's the key is you can't do if you're doing everything yourself, you're going to get burned out eventually. So you got to have the mindset of building up a team when you're building your business. Yeah. And you never want the bottleneck to be on you ever so much pressure yeah (laughs) if the bottleneck is on you you're going to fail yeah exactly i don't care who you are i don't care how good you are it's not scalable that way it's not scalable and like if you put the bottleneck on you you're doing a disservice to the people you're trying to serve to your customers because you are a flawed being we all are especially me i'll be the first one to admit it right um if you have, if everybody and everything has to rely on you, there's no way. What if you get sick? What if you get the flu? What if you have to, you know, take an emergency like trip to go help your best friend who, whose cat got hit by a car, you know, whatever, whatever, like you cannot predict when things are going to happen. So take the bottleneck off of yourself and build a system. And at first it's going to suck. Like it's, you're going to suck. It's going to suck. That's fine. (laughs) That shows you where to go to fix it. That's the beauty of doing something long-term is you give yourself permission to suck at first and you may not suck. You may just be a rock star from day one. That's great too. You're ahead of the learning curve, but it's fine. If y'all, my first interview for the podcast was awful. (laughs) It 
was terrible. Luckily, the gentleman and I are still really good friends to this day because he's just a, an all-star of a human being. But like the production quality was terrible. It was just, it was awful. Like I literally remember I was visiting my brother in North Carolina and I had just my Mac. I had no other microphones. Okay. I didn't do any video. I did audio only. And it was a Skype thing. And I literally clicked record on, uh, I think it was Ecamm for Skype, Ecamm call record or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I clicked record and we just chatted and then I published it and I was like, now I have a podcast. Yeah, man. This you got to start somewhere. This is how it starts. Yeah, but it's fine. It's yep. fine. Honestly, if somebody has a problem with it, they can go fuck themselves yeah. because they're not the ones that are out there doing it. All you got to do is go back and look at Joe Rogan's first episode. It's terrible. And then you'll see like he's even he started. He's the biggest podcast in the world, I think. I'm pretty sure. And so and, and he started with terrible quality. So everybody, you got to start from somewhere. Exactly. And that's the key is just to get started and get the content out there. And so, yeah, I mean, it's amazing, Ben. And another thing Ben is really good at, if you're looking to do any virtual summits, that's uh, Ben is an expert at helping companies launch virtual summits. So if you have any ideas of doing that with your audience, definitely reach out to Ben about that. And how could uh, my audience get in touch with you if they wanted to talk to you about that, Ben? Yeah. So in the, uh, in, in the spirit of staying evergreen, um, just look up my name. Oh, and, yeah. We'll put uh, it in the and, description. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, so sorry check about, that yeah, out. We're violating the rule. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'll put that in the description. And, uh, yeah, Ben does amazing work with live seminars and, and uh, it's it, through the internet. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great thing to take a look at. And, man, you really dropped a lot of information that I didn't know about today. So thank you, Ben. It was amazing. And I'm going to implement some of these and getting our podcasts out there. So I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, educate our audience on disseminating their information through the omni-channel content distribution. Yeah, right on, man. Hey, I appreciate you, uh, you know, having me on so we could chat. And I always enjoy chatting with you. And uh, especially when we get to to create fun stuff like this. Uh, and, and I really do hope it was helpful. Um, oh, it's definitely, I know. think it was very valuable. And um, so, yeah, definitely check out the next Symbio podcast. Uh, we'll be back next week. And thanks again, Ben Gothard, for joining us. Thanks, man. Thanks, everybody.